Hi, this is Billy J. Kramer, and you're listening to Things We Said Today with Ken Michaels and Steve Maranucci. Well, hello, hello, and welcome once again to another exciting edition of a Beatles program that we call Things We Said Today. This is a Beatles show that focuses on what's going on in the world of the Beatles, news-wise, and there's always plenty of news to talk about. I'm Ken Michaels, and I'm being joined on the show by my co-host, Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hello, everybody. On today's show, we're going to be talking about a film that we actually did a show on not too long ago, and that uh, that concerns a film called Good Old Frida. And Frida Kelly was the Beatles fan club secretary in the 60s, and we had a special guest on our show not long ago. And who was that, Steve? That was um, co-producer Kathy McCabe. Right. And she was giving us uh, some tidbits of information about this documentary film, and the difference between now and then, as far as doing a show on good old Frida, is that our own Steve has gotten to see the film now. I haven't yet, but Steve will fill us in on some of the details. Well, I'm going to try not to give too much away. Right. Because uh, there's, I mean, there's a lot I could say, and I could I could throw a bunch of spoilers, and I'm not going to do that, just like I did in the review I wrote, um, I saw it twice during the just concluded San Francisco Film Festival, International Film Festival, excuse mm-hmm. me. And they showed it three times. The first two nights, Frida was there, and um, uh, Kathy was there, and uh, director Ryan White was there, and uh, there were other people from the film there too. Um, I got to meet, I, I met Kathy. Um, at the screening uh, the first night um, in San Francisco, and I also met Frida just briefly and and then saw the film. And I have to say that, you know, if you approach this as a Beatles film, you're looking at it in the wrong way. Primarily, it's Frida's story. Hmm. It's the story of, you know, a woman who, you know, got hired by Brian Epstein as, as... you know, his secretary and ended up doing the, the fan club for 11 years. And, you know, how, I mean, one of the, you know, one of the back story is that, you know, Frida didn't want to tell her story. She'd been asked many times and she never wanted to do it. And then she finally, she finally agreed to do it. And the reason she agreed to do it was the birth of her grandson. Mm-hmm. And that really says so much about her, because she is she's a an incredibly warm human being, and I don't say that as a I mean I our my contact with her personally has been the interview I did with her, and just talking to her just for a few minutes in San Francisco where we actually got to sh- talk to each other. But you get the the story in the film of her, you know, how she how she worked with Brian, what it was like, and her life, you know, as it it evolved around the Beatles. So it's prime it's really a free to story and if that doesn't sound like there's a lot there if if you're you know, people are I know people are gonna naturally drift to the Beatles stuff, but really it's her and she's the charm of the film. And I must say documentaries there's been so many Beatle documentaries, you know, um, and so many, I mean, anyone that's seen documentaries know that they can go from, you know, flat to, you know, to very good, depending on the, the document, the technique of the filmmaker. But Ryan and, and, and Kathy and everybody who worked on this did such an amazing job. And, and I was just floored how good it was. And because of that, we went. I went back on Sunday. They they were showing it one more time on Sunday after Thursday, and I went back Sunday in Berkeley to see it. And Frida was not there. Kathy was not there either. Uh, Ryan was, 
and this time I took my wife, who had not seen the film, who did not come with me the first time, and who is not the huge Beatle fan that I am. And my wife Sue was just thrilled. She, she, we could do nothing but talk about the film on the way home. She thought it was just fantastic, and she, like me, grabbed onto the. It's the story of Frida, um, and and so that's that's the really special part of this film. That's what makes this film so great is that it's Frida. Now, um, now you're I'm, you're saying that uh, your wife is not a big Beatle fan and she loved it. That speaks volumes, as far it as really, I'm it really it really does because yeah. it's a film that people can appreciate. You don't have to be a Beatle fan. I don't I don't think to appreciate it. There's you know there are a lot of stories in the film. There's a lot of pictures that that I did not recognize in the film. The stories are, are fantastic. There's a couple in particular, and I'm not. I'm really not going to give them away. I'm not going to say a word because you have to hear her say them rather than me. What I'm curious about. I mean, you're saying this is more about Frida's life, but if the film is mainly about starting working with Brian and then working with the Beatles and up to, I suppose, the end of the fan club, that is in and of itself related to the Beatles. And I don't want to drag it away from that, you know, completely. I mean, I understand that people are, there are going to be people that are going to go into it and say, and strictly for the Beatle content. And that's fine. You know, that's under, that's understandable. Let me ask you this: How much? What exactly in there is not Beatle content? Is there a, is there anything about her life before working with Brian and yes. her life after the Beatles? Yes, yes, there there is both. It shows her. It shows her. Uh, she still ha- she still works in Liverpool as a secretary. Believe it or not. Mm-hmm. And in fact, the reason she was not there for the Sunday showing in Berkeley was because she had flown out of San Francisco that morning to get back to Liverpool because she had to be to work um, Monday or Tuesday. I can't remember which one. Right. So she's still, you know, she's still working. She's still, in fact, she's also, she's also I believe she said at the screening uh, in the Q&A after that her boss didn't know anything about what she had done. And she, she hasn't been <laughs> really, or, you know, she hasn't, you know, I mean, a lot of people with, you know, with Beatle connections, you know, make sure that everybody knows this. You know, mm. she has not. And in fact, one of the surprising things they said at the screening again was, uh, Ryan said this, I remember. He said after the, um, I'm sorry, after her daughter had seen it at the premiere at South by Southwest, she told Ryan White, she said, 95% of that stuff I have not seen before. I did not know. Hmm. So that's that's what's really amazing, and it's not just. I mean, that's obviously related to the Beatles stuff, but there is there is plenty about her life. People are talking about her, you know, how, what a humble person she is, what a, a nice person she is, and that's what you know. That's really the the essence of the film, and um, and that's what they were. I think more than trying to. Well, I shouldn't say more than trying to, because that's I'm kind of I think I'm overstating it a little bit. But I mean, her story is just as important, if not more important, to the documentary as the Be- as working with the Beatles. So it's not her narrating the Beatles story. It's it's about her and how the Beatles, you know, became part of her life and and what effect they had, and and uh, but also her life around them. So you you learn a lot about her her personal life. In, in this, so now I know where you're coming from, where Frida's concerned, because I met her not long ago at the Fest for Beatle fans, and yeah, she certainly comes across as real, genuine, down to earth, humble, just a regular person. Mm-hmm. Doesn't want much made about her, and it's kind of interesting because anybody who's ever worked in the slightest capacity for the Beatles, in so many ways, their lives are affected. And, and they yet, also and and. As you know, as you know, you know people exploit their connections, however slight, to the nth degree. Right, but at know, the same time, they, if if you've had any connection with them, people are going to be curious about you anyway. So mm-hmm. you have there's a dividing line there, 
I mean, you, I'm, I'm sure to some degree you have to be proud of that association. But at some point, you have to decide how far you're going to go with it if it's exploitation, which some people have done. But right. at the same time, if you've got a story to tell, you're also providing a service to people. And in the case of Frida, she certainly does. And what I find, I'm, I'm very curious about this film, kind of like, and I'm going to make a parallel here with the Jim Birkenstadt book on Jimmy Nickel, because it's, it's territory that hasn't been explored. You know, you, I'm sure there have been times when you've said to yourself, what hasn't been written about the Beatles? You know, and at this point, well, we might find out quite a lot more with Mark Lewison's books. But, you know, this is a story that really hasn't been told. I, th there's a sig I think there's a, a bit of a difference between the Birkenstadt book and this is that, well, obviously, you know, Frida was involved over a much longer period of time. Obviously. Right. And But I think, you know, I mean, just overall, there's a distinct difference in the significance of, of Frida versus, versus Jimmy. I mean, that's not to say Jimmy's story doesn't, shouldn't be told or... I, you know, it was great to learn all that stuff about Jimmy. That you know, I mean, he, he had a fascinating life, you know, outside of the Beatles anyway. Mm -hmm. But Frida's life, you know, is just so uh, um, interesting, and and all the all the things that you that you know that are said, you know, about the Beatles in the film, and how you know her and her working relationship with them and stuff like that, and that that's really fascinating. And and you know, as I Again, as I noted in the review, you know, you kind of wonder what they left out, what they cut. And um, hopefully, the indications are that the eventual DVD, which there will be, even if you did not donate um, to the Kickstarter campaign, they get because of the film deal they picked up with Magnolia Films, the eventual commercial DVD will have some uncut, I mean, will have some cut scenes. So that's a good you know that's a good thing. I know one of the people at the San Francisco showing was saying it should be two DVDs, and I <laughs> I would love to see it to be three because apparently they did many hours of interviews with Frida. So you know I would love to see all everything, but I don't know that that's going to happen. But it'd be nice to see some of the stories. Well, I would like for us to talk about a little bit of what you learned without giving away too much. I mean. My main question, probably the biggest question, would be how involved were the Beatles with the fan club? Did they really take an active interest? I mean, I remember hearing growing up, in, in particular George Harrison's parents, that they answered a lot of fan mail for they George. Uh, yeah, probably Frieda, more so than the other Beatles families. Frieda, Frieda, uh, the movie talks about that. Frieda talks about her relationship with the families. I think in the beginning... Obviously, in the earlier years, their connections to the fan club were a lot more than they were later. The families were personally involved. Ringo's and and uh, and George's were mentioned uh, specifically, and so um, it, it, it's really obvious. And all right, I'll give I'll say one thing that she said that. You know, the, the, they used to come around and drop in, and, and she would have them autograph stuff for them. So they did come in in the early years into the office. Um, I, I, the, can't, I don't recall. I don't think she mentioned it. I don't think that there was as much contact later. Yeah, but they did, they, did they, the Beatles, answer fan mail? Did they actually answer it themselves, or did they have people do it for them? Did George's parents, you know, write an answer for him? That George's, kind of thing, or? George's parents, and I think the story is well known anyway. George's parents did answer a lot of fa uh, fan mail personally, so um, it, it's possible that it's some. You know, I, I mean, I'm sure somewhere along the, the way, you know, they each answered fan mail, you know, um, on but their own. But is that tackled in the film? As to how much they answer the families, it, it, it talks about how her relationship with the families and how. She did, you know, she was very friendly. She was very friendly, for example, with Ringo's mother and stepfather. Mm -hmm. So they were very close. In fact, she indicates they were quite, they were very close. And and yes, there there was there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of uh, interactivity between Ringo's 
family and the fans and George's family and the fans specifically. I don't recall. I, I, I don't think that happened so much with Paul's family and with uh, with John. I mean, th- there's a little bit of discussion about about those about their families, but more about Ringo's and, and George's families. Okay. And what about Brian? And how involved was he with the fan club? She talks about working for him as you know, as an employee, and how and what it was like, and um, you know how he was, and th- uh, there's some interesting, very interesting points there that I, I won't go into too deeply. But but yeah, she talks about you know the the ups and downs of working with Brian, and there were some downs. So she's yeah she's very she's pretty honest about that. And um, you know how how things changed over time, and what the the later years did to her, and obviously that was probably you know that was probably a tough time when they when they broke up. But uh, I mean, overall, it's it's just it's just such a, a very warm human film. That's really the the best way to put it. Her personality carries the movie. Absolutely. Oh kind of well, like yeah. As you, as you know, I mean, you know from from meeting her and how she how she was but yeah it really does her personality is very much a part of the film it's just it's just absolutely wonderful what they did she's just fantastic she's very uh, again I'll say it she's very warm and very human and it's just wonderful to to see it on the screen and if you can you know I, I there uh, as as I'm talking now I think there's only a few festival screenings left, but they are going to try and get more. You should try and see it on the big screen. Oh, I definitely uh, will. If it's yeah. showing on the East Coast, I'll be there. Yeah, either either at the film festivals or when it comes to theaters in the fall uh, with the distribution deal that they've picked up. So, yeah, it's definitely very enjoyable on the big screen. Also, what I'd like to know, you have to decide by yourself, whether or not you're giving way too much stuff. Sure. I mean, you have to say a few things about the film to entice our listeners. Sure. But um, was her relationship with the Beatles, would you say it was more a friendship or was it more business-like? Um, was she really an I insider? Think, I think Did it was she... definitely a friendship. It was definitely a friendship, and that's proved very much in the film as from, from some of the incidents that, that you will see, one in particular in the film um i think i think that's very yeah there's there's no doubt that there was a friendship there they had a very healthy they respected her quite a bit they felt that she was someone that they could trust i'll get yeah let me let me i'll just say this i'll give this away um when the when the fan when the beatles moved to london um that meant everybody was going to be moving to london Mm. and frida's father would not let her go uh, it was just he was a single father, yeah, and he didn't want her to go. So she went in and and actually told Brian. She said uh, she gave her notice. She said, "I'm sorry, I can't go with you to to London." Brian was very distressed. Took it up with the Beatles. All the Beatles said, "We can't let you go," and they actually gave. That's when they gave her his old Brian's office, Brian's vacated office in Liverpool. And she stayed working with the fan club in Liverpool when they went off to London. So That's very interesting. Yeah. That shows how much the Beatles thought of her. Right. That's, yeah, that's... And there are other things, too, that you'll see in the film. Um, but that, I think, without giving too much away, says that they really, they really had a lot of respect for her. There's, one, there's a couple other things in the film that that indicate that too. One thing in particular um, that I won't say anything about um, that you that you'll see, but yeah, there's there's no doubt that they had a lot of respect for her. And the fact, and especially I think now, Paul and Ringo are. I mean, she's she's really kind of you know. Uh, I mean, it's so strange. I shouldn't say strange. It's with all the people that have written books and and have exploited. The Beatles story, you know, for personal gain, she hasn't done it, and that's, you know, I think one of the wonderful things that says that says, says volumes right there. I know, but kind of like a, what I said before, 
there's a way of presenting yourself where it's not exploiting. You know, there are certain people in the Beatles world that handle themselves in a tasteful, professional manner mm -hmm. without overdoing it, without overusing their association with the Beatles. You know, I know what it's like. I I know I told you this story before, but where I live in Connecticut, there's a woman who I've met several times that has that works in the New Haven area. She's from Liverpool, and she was a Beatle fan in the '60s, and she went to the Cavern all the time. And I'd love to have her on my radio program. She won't do it. I mean, there are people out there that just want to keep everything to themselves and not make a big deal about did you, themselves. Did you tell me that story? I'm, I, I, I don't remember it off the top of my head. But yeah, I, I've told you this privately, but okay. I mean, it's, it's just a matter of there are some people that don't want to make a big fuss about themselves. They don't think they're that important. You know, unfortunately, if you're associated with the Beatles, people around the world who know your story are going to think you're important. <laughs> well, a story like that for somebody that was at the cavern and saw them back in those days. I mean, that's those are those stories are are just gold because you know we ha we haven't heard a lot of stories from people who were there at that time, and so it's really a shame that she won't even just talk about what it was like seeing them. Right, she you know. doesn't want attention drawn to her. You know, she do, she doesn't look for any kind of attention or fame or anything like that. So there are people in this world who are like that, that just want to lead a very quiet life and remember things the way that they that they have and not have some fuss made about them. There are lots right. of Beatle fans in the 60s who saw the Beatles at the Cavern, and they haven't told their story. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, and all the other venues where the Beatles play. So... She's not alone, this woman, but I'm saying Frida Kelly, for all that she did working for the Beatles, she would think <laughs> that she'd want to tell the story. You would think. Not, not to make money, not for fame, but just for the fans who are curious to know what it was like to work for the Beatles and be part of the fan club. Right. For a long period of time. There's so many people that have an association with the Beatles for a very short period of time. Frida was there from the very beginning when the fan club started to yeah. the end. Before they, before they were famous. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. she's got a great story to tell. So, you know, she's just someone who doesn't want to have a big deal made about her. And she probably doesn't realize how important a role she played. Right. I think she probably does realize that her role is important. Uh, but, again, she's just the type of person that wants to be in the background and, just, you know, be very humble and... And and it's it's beautiful. It's really it's really nice. And you know, so the kind of stuff that I'm curious to know, and I don't know if this is tackled in the film, but you obviously do. Is uh, for one thing, how big a staff did the fan club have? How many people did it take to put it all together? Did they get real inside information about the Beatles, or was there a lot of stuff that was, you know, kept private or confidential? I can it, it, the staff thing. That's kind of, yeah, that, that's not gone into a real lot of detail, although she did tell me in um, the interview I did that a lot of times they would, or sometimes they would grab people that came in the office and say, here, you do this, do this, do this. And <laughs> so it was that kind of a situation. I I can't imagine. So, so you're with, saying it wasn't a very organized? It It doesn't go into a lot of that, so... But I can't imagine that with dealing with the number, with the amount of mail that they must have gotten, that, you know, that it wasn't, you know, it must have been crazy. I mean, it's, you know, the work must have been just endless. You know, if you're dealing with all these people, you know, from all over the world, at the height of Beatlemania, writing in and asking for, you know, locks of, of John's hair or something like that. I mean, yeah. God, you know, that must have been just, just insane. So, but... There is a little bit of that. Again, it's more about her story, though. I mean, there is an interview with somebody who worked uh, alongside her, but there's only that's only one one interview. What people were interviewed? Uh, Billy Kinsley of the Mercy Beats. Uh, Tony Barrow is in there. Okay. A couple of members of the Foremost. Frida's daughter is in there. Um, this woman who worked with Frida in the fan club. And that's about it. Those are about the only interviews 
there is another appearance uh, in the film by a person whose name I will not say. But um, other than that, um, uh, there isn't a lot of um, there aren't a lot of people in the film besides besides Frida. Is the film done in an interview style, or yeah. does okay? The interviews, so. the interviews were done in her. Uh, there were, uh, a lot of the footage was shot in her house. She's sitting on the uh, on the steps being interviewed. It uh, some of it follows her around town, and and of course there is a lot of archival footage, a lot, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of you know like I said there's a lot of pictures, but there. there's no film footage, right? Film footage of you mean from of the, the old Beatles? Days? Yeah, yeah, there is a little bit. For, there is a little, not a ton, not I would say a ton, but there is a there is a little. There is some stuff in there, yeah. And they are using four Beatles songs in the documentary, right? They use the, um, and I can't, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head now, uh, I Will, Let Me Do, a little bit of the Christmas record at the beginning because of the, you know, the good old Frida part of it, and I can't remember what the fourth song is off, off the top of my head. Uh, I didn't make note of that, but yeah, there is. There are four Beatles songs, and there are there are a lot of other songs in the film, several of which the Beatles covered, if that tells you anything. Right. So there's a lot of original songs in there, and hopefully that will become a... Um, hopefully they'll do a CD with that. So this film is not done with a narrator. It's really Frida being interviewed throughout most of the film with a few other people being interviewed. Right. Yeah, okay. in fact, you only hear an outside voice once in the film. So when I, I, by outside voice, I, I, somebody asking questions. Otherwise, she's sitting there giving her personal recollection, recollections. Does Frida say, should I just assume, based on what you just told me before about uh, Frida being close to Ringo's parents, that maybe she was closest to Ringo of all the Beatles? Or does she really indicate who she was closest to? That issue does come up in the film, and I'm not going to go into again. I don't want to go into details because there's some. That's one of the highlights of the film. Um, but she was, she does like I said. She said she was very close to Ringo's uh, mother and stepmom, uh, our stepfather, excuse me. And she was also, uh, she said, uh, the what she said about George's parents were that they were probably the best acclimated to what happened to the Beatles, to, to the you know to all the fame and fortune and all that. They accepted it better probably than than everybody else did. They were mo they were um I don't know how to, I should say comfortable. They were probably more comfortable with with dealing with it, you know, with and because they they welcomed fans into their home. Uh, I think Louise has said this too several times that that um, their parents, uh, her parents, um, were uh, always invited fans in and stuff like that. So they were very welcoming to the fans. So. Okay. Does she go into any detail about each individual Beatle and what they were like to work for? Does yeah. Does she pick apart John was like this, Paul was like this, or whatever? Yeah, she does. Yeah, she does. She talks about, she talks about them all. There are some very, some of the best, Parts of the film relate to that, obviously, about the about the personal details, and I won't go any further than that. <laughs> you're so guarded here. I right? know I am. You, you, I, I just don't want. I don't want to give. You, it away you're not because, giving that much away anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, because it it really um, it's better to see it and than to because that was one of the fun things about seeing it without knowing a whole lot about it was all these things that I. You know that she says in the in the film. You know, I didn't have a hint of what she was going to say, and I really would like people to enjoy it that way too. So, and they will. I mean, they'll enjoy it anyway, with or without my. You know, without any, without me saying anything. I mean, I don't have to. I don't think I really have to encourage people to see this film. I mean, the reactions I've gotten on on Facebook since seeing it. You know, were incredibly positive everybody wants to see this movie now mm -hmm. and it's just really and actually it's probably a little frustrating that they can't see it now they have to either wait for a film festival to show up or to wait until several months down the road when 
either if you were a Kickstarter person, you get a DVD, or when you know you finally when the when the commercial DVD comes out, or if it comes when it comes into the theaters, you get to see it that way. But you know, it's just yeah. I, I mean, there's just a real wonderfulness about this film, and and Beal, you know, Beal stories tend to get spread quickly. I mean, look at everything on the on Facebook every day. How quickly anything, no matter how minuscule, gets gets blown up and gets tossed out. That's quickly. definitely and that's true. That's exactly what would happen if you know if you started if people started. And then I mean, there may be a people who have seen the film. I mean, because obviously I'm not the only person in the world who's seen it. I'm sure people are talking about the film and talking about what's in it. But given, you know, I don't know if I'm being a little too lofty, but given the fact that a lot of people know and read my stuff, I really would prefer that they see it for themselves and they get surprised. All right. Well, I'm being, I'm being, I'm probably, you know, I'm I'm not being protective of the film at all because it's a, it's a great film and I can't say that enough. So, you said what you can. <laughs> I said what I, I said what I wanted to say. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so let's just say that uh, if any of you would like to get in touch with us here at Things We Said Today, there's a simple way to do so, and that's by email. And our email address is Things We Said Today Radio Show at Gmail dot com. If you want to get in touch with Steve, all you got to do is go to his Beatles Examiner column and his gazillion columns that he wrote gazillion writes for. Columns. And the way to do that is how? Uh, on examiner.com, search for Beatles Examiner, two words, and you'll find my name, and, and you'll, uh, at the bottom of most of my columns, I have links to all my columns, so you can you can look me up, you can look up my George Harrison column, my Paul McCartney column, uh, and, my, and you can see on the Beatles column all the coverage of the uh, McCartney tour, and Everything and the uh, the Ringo Starr column and my vintage rock and roll column and my TV and DVDs column. So there I am, everywhere, all, all day long. long, all day long. Every He's time. on the keyboard. It just well trying Typing. to break, trying to break away from it occasionally. <laughs> all he does is write articles all day long. That's right. And then he squeezes in this half hour with me every week, and that's we all go. he does. <laughs> There we go. And if you want to get in touch with me, my email address is everylittlething at att.net. You can check out my website, which is kenmichaelsradio.com. You'll find out about my radio program, Every Little Thing. And by all means, if you can, please check out my live broadcast of Every Little Thing, which is on Wednesday evenings from 8 to 10 on 88.7 WNHU in West Haven, Connecticut, which you can stream at www.wnhu.net. And uh, on my website, you can find trivia every single week and lots of interviews with people connected to the Beatles. And once again, that's KenMichaelsRadio.com. And let me just throw in my email address. It's BeatlesExaminer at gmail.com. So you can write to me directly. Yeah, you can write to Steve, you can write to me, or you can write to the both of us. So thanks so much for listening. This is Ken Michaels here on Things We Said Today, saying thanks for tuning in and... I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci from Southern California California saying see you next time. Mm-hmm.